ACLU and the Center for Constitutional Rights have filed a lawsuit on behalf of the family members of three U.S. citizens who were killed in drone strikes in Yemen in 2011. We represent the grandfather of 16-year-old Abdul Rahman al Alaki, who was killed with his teenage cousin and a few other people while they were eating dinner at an outdoor restaurant. We also represent uh, the father uh, of, of um, Anwar al Alaki and uh, the mother of Samir Khan. Now, many people know about the allegations that have been leveled against Anwar al Alaki. Um, and they are very serious, but the difference between allegations and evidence is called due process. And the United States government has fought every step of the way in terms of providing meaningful accountability. Right now, the government's response to our lawsuit is, the court, is that the court has no role to play whatsoever in adjudicating the constitutionality of the deaths of three U.S. citizens. The targeted killing policy began under President Bush in around 2008 as a programmatic policy of the United States. It was vastly expanded by President Obama in 2009 onwards. Today we have estimates of several thousand people who have been killed under this policy far from any battlefield, often using drones, sometimes using other aircrafts in countries like Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen and elsewhere. Hundreds of these people at least have been civilians, but we know far too little about exactly who has died, at what cost, and the number of civilian casualties that have taken place. The most controversial and rightly so part of the targeted killing policy is its use far from any recognized battlefield. And under both human rights law and the laws of war, the use of lethal force by states is strictly limited, as it should be, to protect the right to life. Under human rights law, lethal force may only be permissible if it is in response to a specific, concrete, and imminent threat to life, or grave injury. But those aren't the standards that either the Bush administration or the Obama administration have been using. We found out earlier this year from the leak of a so-called white paper that purported to summarize a longer memo by the Department of Justice about when a U.S. citizen could be killed, that the way that the government was defining imminence has little to no relationship with how normal people understand it or what the dif dictionary's definition of it is. They defined imminence um, as meaning that the U.S. government didn't actually need to have specific evidence of an actual plot that was even going to take place at any point in the foreseeable future. With those kinds of gaps, the imminence is deprived, robbed of its plain meaning. When we're talking about the use of lethal force, international law places limitations on it, whether we are in armed conflict or outside of armed conflict. And the most controversial aspect of this program, and rightly so, legally, ethically, and morally, is that the administration is claiming law of war authority to kill people outside of places in which and with which the United States is at war. So while under international law it might be permissible outside of the war context to target and to use lethal force who present a con people who present a concrete specific imminent threat, uh, that's not the standard that the government has been using in Yemen and elsewhere. So on May 23rd of uh, 2013, President Obama gave a major national security speech and amongst one of the topics that he addressed was the basis and justification for the targeted killing program. I think that speech came about as a result of a tremendous and growing amount of pressure from Congress, the American public, and the uh, public abroad, um, including allies in Europe, to provide greater transparency and justification about the program. While it is 